Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Yesterday, Epic just released the Electric Dreams demo, which is the demo project that they showcased at GDC all the way back in March, which showcased a ton of new features of Unreal Engine 5.2, mainly including PCG or procedural content generation. And now you can download the demo project for free, take it all apart and see how they've done it. So here we are inside the demo, and as you can see, it's absolutely insane. Now I'm running this in 4K on my RTX 4090, and this just looks unreal. So basically, you can fly around here. You have sort of this drone pawn. Unfortunately, they didn't include the truck that you could drive around inside of the demo, probably due to licensing is my guess, but, but everything else that we saw is here, including all the PCG graphs. So this is big because the main future of this demo is the fact that everything you see here is generated procedurally. So the team over at Epic, they just seem to outdo themselves every single year, releasing new tools and features that push the industry forward. And I mean, if you showed this demo to you know people five years ago, told them that every single mesh in this scene has over millions of triangles, is procedurally placed and illuminated in real time. It's just insane how far Unreal Engine pushes the boundaries of graphical technology. And just looking at this scene, there are two big parts, I think, that sells it. Well, the first main part is obviously PCG. So PCG is a huge part of this demo. The fact that everything here is procedurally generated and the main selling point, in my opinion, is the placement of all the rocks, the foliage, the trees, you know, the vines. All of it looks very natural. I mean, if you go out into nature and in the wild, you aren't going to see the same two rock at the same scale or rotation, you know, right next to each other. You're obviously going to see some sort of variety of different rocks, all with unique shapes and sizes scattered around randomly. And I think this is the main feature that PCG has to offer. The fact that you can achieve the same level of realism and saving yourself a lot of time rather than having to place, you know, individually every single rock scale it, rotate it to be a different shape or size. Yes, Unreal does have foliage tools that allow you to paint trees and rocks on the landscape, but I mean, these tools aren't going to cut it when you have to build a large world. Now, obviously some people might argue that, you know, once you have everything procedurally spawned, you're not gonna have as much control over it, or you just won't have that artistic control that hand placement has to offer. But Epic already took this all into account. And the powerful thing about PCG is that you can create custom tools that give you precise control over how things are procedurally generated and spawn into your scene. So for example, this large assembly that you have here in the middle, this is just a spline, which means that I can take you know, each one of these points, I can adjust how big I want this embankment here in the center, and it will automatically adjust in real time and generate all the meshes on top of it. And these hand tools that you can use to tweak further the control, you can actually take one of these, and these are called you know, little handles. Basically, these are custom PCG tools, and artists can further customize and randomize the way that the spline generates and you know interacts with the environment. In fact, there's so much more that you can do with PCG. You can create things like entire forests, that are procedurally generated. Then you can take, say, a spline path and cut it through that forest. You can add things like a river that runs the forest and procedurally spawn rocks and vegetation on the banks of that river. The important part about PCG is that it can grab references to things that are placed within your level. So it can say, you know, hey, do not spawn any trees anywhere on the river, so make sure to remove them. And then I only want to spawn, say, vines on these types of cliff rocks. And in fact, I recently used PCG in my Unreal Engine 5 course to procedurally spawn all of the foliage on my map. And I could tell it where I wanted to spawn certain vegetation based on different biomes. So for example, I had a forest biome where I only spawned pine trees and rocks within this forest. Then I had a grasslands biome, which you know was just rocks, grass, and bushes then a tropical biome for things like palm trees, banana trees, you know, beach rocks, and this would be all along the coast of the map. And the PCG graph could figure out where to spawn all these different trees, rocks, and foliage based on the different biomes inside of my map. And I could even exclude spawning these foliage on rivers, lakes, or oceans across the level. And the neat part about this is that I can actually reuse my PCG actor and drag and drop it into a completely new level and it will generate all this for me. So it's very versatile and reusable. Now, by the way, this is my multiplayer survival game course. If you guys wanna check it out, I show you how to use PCG inside of this course. I mean, there's tons of stuff that we create. So we go over things like, you know, creating crafting system, harvesting system, building system, all that stuff. 
and then we create an open world map and we use things like PCG to spawn all of the foliage on that map. So there's some brand new Unreal Engine 5.2 content in the course. Check out the multiplayer survival game course, link in the description below, or go to smartpoly.teachable.com. PCG opens the door to so many different possibilities within Unreal Engine and there really isn't nothing like it anywhere else. Now there's still a ton of stuff to unpack here in this demo, and I think we'll have to make a separate video just going into some of the PCG graphs and breaking it all down. Now I also have a bunch of other video ideas to test out in this demo, maybe trying it out inside of VR, see how it'll look. Also adding our own custom pawn and running around at the ground level just to get an idea of what it would look like to play this as if it were some sort of you know third person open world game. If you guys have any ideas of what I should test out with this demo, let me know in the comments down below. Also, I forgot to mention the minimum specs to run this demo is a eight core CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, an RTX 2080 or higher, and at least eight gigs of VRAM. So yeah, and that's at 1080p, you know, with the resolution set to 50%. So very resource intensive. Those are the minimum specs, the recommended specs on the other hand, our 12 core CPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 3080 or higher with at least, you know, 10 gigs of VRAM. So yeah, I think I want to try and test out this demo on some of my other rigs. I have an Asus laptop with, I think, a 3060. So I kind of want to try that out. And in fact, I still need to do a review of that laptop because a few of you guys have been asking me, you know, what is a good laptop to use for Unreal Engine? Anyways, that is a side note, but something to note is that if you are going to download this demo project, there are three different separate levels that come included. So depending on your computer specs, you, you can test out the smaller demo level, which has, you know, all the main PCG tools. So it should run a lot smoother or at least, you know, a lot less performance to run. So if you don't meet the required specs, you could try that out. And again, I'll have to test this out and show you guys what kind of performance I get on my other rig. And one thing I also just noticed as I was recording this video is Epic has also released documentation on the demo actually breaking down the PCG graph and talking about the technical side. So there's the full documentation that has been released. So I think I have to dive into this and read up on it. And if you guys are interested, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But anyways, that is going to be it for this video. In our next video, we'll probably check out how to set up your own scene using some of the different PCG graph components from this demo. And so with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.